Welcome to the 10th instalment of the A to Z Master Quest Cape Guide. I'm Hunter S, or the RuneScape Lawhound, and today we'll be covering the following requirement. Banking History, otherwise known as the Enchanted Key Mini Quest. As usual, I would recommend that you watch my MQC Lengthies and Hardest Requirements videos first when they pop up via suggestion cards. This is because it is important to start some requirements early. Also, if you have missed the previous A to Z guide, where we covered Bandos's Memories and Bane Tuna, please click the suggestion card that will appear now. For these videos, I'm going to assume you have the quest point cape, but I will attempt to include the quests, skills, and any other requirement you need for each achievement. In addition, these video guides are made to be Iron Man friendly. With that, let's get started with Banking History. The requirement we are going to look at today is the Banking History achievement, and this is worth 25 rune score. You must find all hidden treasure from the Making History quest, X out of 11. In other words, you need to complete the Enchanted Key mini quest. To do this, you need to have completed the quests, Making History and Meeting History. Before we cover the task itself in this video, we are going to discuss and get to grips with the confusion associated with it. Some players have reached out to me at various points while I've been uploading videos regarding banking history, as they have been struggling with this achievement. This is actually understandable when the counter for the task is ambiguous and, to be honest with you, buggy. Let me explain to you what is going on with that counter. Take a look at this example I'm about to show you. On the left hand side, the achievement displays that the counter for this task is out of 11. However, when Dragon D94 digs at one of the correct key locations, the counter does not increase to 1 out of 11. This is because there are two quests in this series, i.e. Making History and Meeting History, and consequently, there are two parts to this mini quest, with the first 11 treasures being accessible after the end of Making History, and the second set of 11 treasures only being accessible after the end of the Meeting History quest. For some reason, the counter is only counting the treasures that are a part of the second set of treasures which are unlocked after meeting history, not those from after making history. So essentially, you have to find all 11 treasures from making history first to unlock the 11 treasures from meeting history. Basically, the requirement counter should be out of 22 and not 11. This is most likely why your task isn't updating as you go to the correct locations and dig there. You are most probably doing the correct thing, but the counter may have made you doubt yourself and confused you. I do hope that makes some sense. Even the requirements description that I read to you earlier, find all hidden treasure from the making history quest X out of 11, is misleading. And this is something that Jagex needs to fix, as there are 22 treasures for this achievement in total, not 11. So. On with the task. Because of this confusion, in this guide I'm going to include the number for each location out of 22. If you follow this guide from beginning to end, you should have no problems. However, please be aware that after the first location of the first 11 treasures, the next 10 treasure sites for the first half of this achievement will be in a random order for each player. This does mean that if I visit a location in this video and digging at that location isn't working for you, you need to note down where I went and try the next location until you find where your key is taking you. You can then revisit that location that didn't work later on. Due to the random nature of 10 of the Making History post quest treasures, it is important, I feel, for you to understand how the key works, as the help I can provide is somewhat limited because of this randomness. I can show you the 10 randomised locations, but I cannot determine which order they will be given to you in. So, the key works similarly to a hot or cold game. As you get closer to the treasure spot, the key will get warmer until it is steaming hot. To see how hot or cold your key is, simply click it. As far as I can tell and from my research, the key's temperature gauges are Number 1. Very cold. This means you are a long way away from the location. I don't believe there is a freezing indicator, but I can't be 100% sure. If there is, freezing would mean you are miles and miles away and should teleport to the other side of RuneScape. 2. Cold. You are far away from the treasure location. You are not so far for it to be very cold, but you're certainly not close. 3. The key is warm. 
you are close-ish to the treasure location and likely getting closer to the correct area. 4. The key is hot. You aren't far away from the treasure spot. 5. Very hot. You are homing in on the spot. I can't give exact number of steps, but you're very close. 6. Ouch! Burning hot. You are a few steps away from the location. 7. The key is steaming. You are standing on the treasure. Dig here. The key will also tell you whether it is warmer or colder than the last time you clicked it. If it is colder, you are heading the wrong way and should try a different direction. If it is warmer, you are heading the correct way and should continue in that direction. During this video, you should be able to tell whether you are following the correct location thanks to these different temperature gauges. For example, if you're following a certain location and your key is still displaying that it is cold when the player in my video is standing on top of the treasure and their key is steaming, you know you've got the incorrect spot and can then proceed to try the next location. Bear in mind that you will need to revisit the spot you skipped when your key's location indicates that spot. So after each location, you may want to click your key to gauge how far the next location will be away from you, as well as take notes of the locations you have dug at. This video will have chapters, as they usually do, which should allow ease of access to every location covered. Sorry to rattle on for a while there, I just think it's important that you understand the bugginess and the confusion surrounding this achievement. So, let's get started. Grab a spade, teleport runes and your enchanted key. It can be reclaimed from Joral after meeting History, who can be found at the outpost south of the Tree Gnome Stronghold if you've destroyed it. The outpost is here on the map and a replacement should be free. If you've only completed Making History, you've destroyed the key and you're watching this hoping to complete only the first half of the achievement, Try visiting Erin, the Silver Stall Merchant in East Ardoin. He is here and will charge you 500 coins for a replacement. It is likely that most of you watching will need to revisit Joral to reclaim your key and not Erin. The first treasure site is located in the Fremenic province. This is the same for every player. Here is the rough location to dig at. You may have to use your key to determine the exact location as I don't have one anymore. Remember, do not be alarmed if your counter doesn't update for these first 11 treasures. The randomness starts here. Get yourself to a fairy ring for the next location and teleport to the fairy ring north of Mudskipper Point by entering code A for Alpha, I for India and Q for Quebec. Run north and follow your key to this location. The location to dig is here. Remember, if this location isn't working for you, move on to the next one and come back to this one later. Teleport to the Grand Exchange in Barok and test your key. If it is burning hot, Run into the Grand Exchange and find the location which is a little southwest of the main tent. The key should be steaming right about here. Dig down to find your treasure. Teleport to the Falador Lodestone and run northeast following the temperature of your key. It should lead you to a spot west of the body altar. Dig here for the next set of treasure. Use the Eagle's Peak Lodestone and run south, and then slightly east towards the Charm Sprite Hunter Arena. Once you get to the Hunter Arena, look for three benches and test your key's temperature when standing in the centre of them. There are two locations which are quite close to each other and can be easily confused, so if your key is not steaming when standing here, but it is still warm or very warm, try this next location that I'm about to cover. This next location, which is close to the Charm Sprite Hunter Arena location, can be found by returning to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone, hopping over the stile and running to the east side of the Tree Gnome Stronghold. The treasure spot is slightly west of the Agility Arena.
teleport to the Archaeology Guild using the Archaeology Journal and run southwest. If your key is set to this location, it will bring you to this spot, just east of a musician. If you have one, use a Clan Vexillum to teleport to the Clan Camp south of Falador. If not, use a Falador teleport and run south through the city. This treasure location is just southeast of the Clan Notice Board. Here, to be precise. Teleport to the Draenor Lodestone and run south towards the Lumbridge Swamp. The key will lead you to a spot near the entrance to the Shattered Worlds minigame. This may be strange to say, but if you first dig up a zombie head, try digging again to get the treasure. This is the location for this treasure. Teleport to the Al Karid lodestone and run north towards the jewel arena. Alternatively, you could use a ring of jeweling and run west. Just outside of the Jewel Arena, or what is going to be Het's Oasis, slightly southwest of the Summoning Obelisk, will be the location for this treasure. If you have it unlocked, teleport to the Kandarin Monastery and run north towards a broken cart. The treasure will be located southwest of this broken cart. If you don't have that teleport, run south from the Ardoin Lodestone and find the broken cart directly south of the zoo. The treasure is here. Thankfully, now the requirement becomes a little bit easier, as each location is in the same order for every player for this second set of 11 treasures. If this next location that I'm going to cover doesn't work for you, you need to go back to the previous 11 locations, because you may be missing one of them. Without the first half of the mini quest complete, and by that I mean the 11 making history treasures, I don't think you'll be able to advance to the easier second half, or the 11 meeting history treasures. So just make sure you've got them all. Feel the enchanted key to roll it over into the next 11 locations automatically. Remember, you will still need your key and a spade in your inventory, and teleport runes will be useful. From this next treasure, your counter may start to update. Teleport to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone and jump over the stile to the southeast, entering the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Find the Gnome Ball Arena. The twelfth treasure location is directly west of the Crystal Tree and slightly south of the Gnome Ball Arena. The precise location is here. Next, teleport to the Al Karid Lodestone and run south towards Shantae's Pass. The treasure is near the dead centre of Shantae's area, right about here. For the 14th treasure, teleport to the Karamja Lodestone. Run west and slightly north past the tribesmen to find the treasure spot near a sunbathing skeleton. The exact location is here. Deposit all of your items and valuables for the next location, except the key and a spade, and either use the wilderness lodestone and run south, or jump over the wall north of the Grand Exchange. Go just north of this beacon to find the treasure. Use the key to help guide you to the exact location, which is here. Use a wicked hood if you have one and teleport to the nature altar. Slightly northwest of this is a small mine north of a summoning obelisk where you will find the next treasure location. You can use the fairy ring code C for Charlie, K for Kilo and R for Romeo and run northeast instead if you wish. Here is the exact location to dig at. Teleport to the Ooglog lodestone and run north for the 17th treasure. Next to the hunting expert's hut you will find the treasure. Here. Home teleport to the Alcarid Lodestone and run south towards Shantae's Pass.
Pay the rug merchant to take you to Sofanum. Once arrived, run east and then south. Near the big lizards, you will find your 18th treasure spot. You could also run east from the Menophos Lodestone and through Sofanum's eastern gate to get here instead. The exact location is here. Deposit all your items again because we're heading back to the wilderness. This time we are heading directly north of the bandit camp as is being shown on screen. I'll remind you again not to deposit your key or spade by mistake. Now teleport to the wilderness lodestone and run west towards the dark warrior's fortress. Once you've ran past the fortress, run north towards the Wilderness Bandit Camp. Your treasure location will be located to the east of one of the Wilderness's teleport obelisks. Here. Teleport out of the Wilderness, but don't get out any valuables because you'll be returning there in a minute. Instead, get your Ring of Kinship out of the bank and teleport to Damonheim. The treasure location is in the Wilderness, but more easily accessed from Damonheim. The spot is around here on the map. To get there, run southwest and past the Wilderness Guard. Carry on west and once around the body of water, run north. Use your key to determine the exact location. I believe it to be here. For the penultimate treasure in this long requirement, teleport to the Berthorpe Lodestone. Run west towards Death Plateau. Hop over the wall and protect from range if you have a low defence stat. Follow the path around to the east, leading into one of the troll camps. Climb up the cliffside and run slightly north to find the treasure location, which I believe is here. Our final location is in the wilderness, so deposit all valuables again and teleport to the Ardoin Lodestone. Cross over the log shortcut, found southwest of the Lodestone. Run south and then west towards the Ardoin Castle to arrive at the wilderness lever. Pull the lever and enter the wilderness. Run north and slash the web. Run east and you will arrive in a small scorpion pit. Be careful not to run too far as you could encounter the chaos elemental. The location should be slightly south of a cave entrance. Right about here. The achievement will pop up and your key will dissolve into dust in your hands. Big congratulations to you, you have completed the Banking History Achievement. I know this requirement is long and confusing, so please do reach out and let me know if you have any questions. But before I do my usual outro, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has watched a single one of my videos this year, and to those who watch every one. Together, we have accumulated over 57,000 total watch minutes and 11,000 views, and I couldn't be more thankful for all of your support this year. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope it helped you. If it did, please leave me a like and subscribe for more MQC guides. I hope you have a great start to 2022, and I'll catch you all in the new year. Take care everybody, goodbye.